The first grid error that I'm going to show you is what happens if you are not at the focal distance that you're supposed to. If you're not at the focal distance, you're not at the convergence point. All of these errors happen because you're not at the convergence point, right? The convergence point is where all of these grid strips meet in space. And then coming back down to the X-ray image receptor, that is known as your focal distance. If I use an incorrect SID, look, I purposely wore black for a reason. Look at what happens to my sweater. Do you see how you can still see pretty good right through here in the middle? But then, sorry, I'm also a little bit off level here. But then also you can still see some black coming through here on the sides, right? If I bring my arm down. So it's not complete grid cutoff but it definitely did reduce some of the x-ray reaching the sides. If I did a really short SID, same thing. I would be able to see fine and clear in the middle, but then as I start getting to these cantered angled lead strips, I'm going to start getting some grid cutoff. So I'm not cutting off all of the black of my sweatshirt behind it, right? But I am definitely cutting off some. This is known as symmetrical peripheral cutoff. And that's a lot of big syllables. That basically just means I have the same amount of cutoff on both sides. So both sides have about an equal amount of white and an equal amount of black still going through. Again, I'm not quite in D10, but something like that, right? Um, sometimes off-focus grid errors can still be used. Like if I was doing a lumbar spine and I didn't do it at 40 inches, I might be able to get away with sending it depending on how far the um, grid cutoffs went. You know, if it goes off into the spinous processes, you're probably going to have to repeat. Then we have off-center and off-level. Off-center and off-level grid errors tend to happen when we're on portables. Because when portables, it is very important that our x-ray tube and our image receptor are perfectly aligned. If they're not, like the image receptor is tilted, we're not going to be at the convergence point. Because remember again, this is going to have a convergence point going out here. And if my x-ray tube is over here, I'm not at the convergence point. So I can show you here with my flashlight too. If, um, let's say I'm trying to do an, uh, a chest x-ray, right, and I have the person, you know, laying on one of those squishy mattresses, and I think I'm aligned, but when I throw the grid behind them, it actually tilts back even more. Again, remember, my convergence point is now going to be off, right? I convert, I'm bringing this down and do this. So at this point, my x-ray tube and my image receptor should be aligned at about the same angle but if I have the patient tilt down now my convergence point is over here but I'm still shooting this direction how does that appear that is going to be known as off level right and off level as you can see is going to create what I call an ombre appearance or a gradual decrease of IR exposure across the entire thing Notice how this is still black, this is still black, but this area starts to get white. So it, I think it looks ombre, right? It's pretty extreme. It can be pretty extreme, I should say. And it's because the convergence point is now over here, but I'm still shooting the x-ray from right here. So I'm not at the convergence point. Notice that when I turn the grid to align to the x-ray tube, now I still have a similar amount of grid cut off on the sides. Good stuff. The other one, like I said, off-level and off-center both appear very similar. If I have off-center, that means that maybe my grid is way over here. I'm still shooting at the patient right here, but I think that this grid is right underneath them perfectly aligned like this. It's actually way over here. I didn't palpate well enough. In that case, do you see how I have, again, an ombre appearance? Black on one side, and then it just starts to become gradually more white, or a loss of IR exposure across the whole thing. OK. 
Okay, off center, off center, off level, both appear similar. So they are both going to be a gradual decrease in IR exposure across the entire thing or ombre. Now the other grid error that could happen and it's kind of almost impossible to happen anymore but don't you worry uh i have done this in my past um as i was comping for a portable abdomen x-ray i did this but that was a, a few years ago and things have changed and we don't really do this stuff anymore so um reason being so remember these angled strips are supposed to meet at the convergence point right and if my angled strips are not going in the same direction as the x-ray beam is coming out and they're actually going in this direction right across instead of being in this direction do you notice again how much of my black sweater you can see behind here you can still see it pretty good in the middle but basically all you're seeing is these grid strips on the side. You're not seeing nothing, right? Because it's gonna be basically complete, severe peripheral cutoff. Peripheral just meaning the sides, right? It is a non-diagnostic image. Even if I was just doing a spine, odds are I'm gonna start cutting off anatomy on the sides or maybe the SI joints or something. It is not going to be a diagnostic image. Upside down grid errors are very rare, but the registry loves asking you this question because it is such an apparent answer. Uh, I can show you a picture of an upside down grid with just the middle being black and the rest being super white. And you're like, oh, upside down grid. It doesn't look like anything else. Um, I think it looks kind of like an open book, you know, when you have an open book and like the middle is like the spine and it's kind of darker and then the pages are all white. Okay, so that's my own thing. But remember, uh, focus has a similar thing, meaning that I am at the wrong distance, but I can still see through here. So I still have some black, just not as much black as I should if I was at the correct distance. So off focus happens when I'm at uh, the wrong SID. It's very common, and it's gonna be symmetrical peripheral cutoff. Off level is gonna happen when I have um, my convergence point over here, when it should be aligned over here. It happens a lot with portables when we're shoving cassettes down underneath patients. And it's gonna be that ombre appearance. It's gonna be just fine and dandy on one section and then like pretty white on the one side. And that's also how off-center is going to look. Pretty white on the one side and then kind of okay in the middle. Um, or I, actually, it would be the opposite. Anyways, off-center and off-level, you'll notice both look the same. What does that mean? Think like a test maker, not a test taker. If I have to write a test question and I need to say, which grid error appears as extreme peripheral cutoff um, and is non-diagnostic? That's an easy answer, right? There's only one that looks like that, the upside down grid, right? The off focus is not extreme. It can still be diagnostic. Um, off level and off center both look the same. They both look like this ombre appearance, this decrease of IR exposure across the image receptor. Which means, if the registry were to ask you that question, they've just lost one of their answer choices. I just gave you the possible answer choices of upside down grid, off center, off level, off focus, A, B, C, D. If I were to ask you a question and say which one appears as an ombre, now I've just used two of my choices, off-level and off-center both have that ombre appearance. Now if I were to say which one has extreme peripheral cutoff, easy, right? It is the only one that has extreme peripheral cutoff. So kind of think like that when you're thinking about test questions, how they're going to word it and what they're going to be zeroing in on. You want to zero in on the things that are extremely unique.